Hello, in this video I'm going to go over the fifth problem from the first problem set of David Tong's lecture notes. So uh, it's all about, uh, what is it about? Oh yeah, okay, so Lorentz transformation. So we have this, uh, you know, our transformation to our coordinates, the uh, Lorentz transformation. And we would like that under this transformation, the line element or the, the metric is invariant. So this. So we can check that by plugging in our expression for our transformed coordinates here. And so we'll get this. And uh, then I'll just rearrange. So again, these are all numbers, uh, so I can freely move these around. Uh, so I'll just move this over here. And then I'll have this expression. And so this, so I'd want this to, uh, so, so this thing must be equal to this, basically, uh, for both of these sides to be equal to each other. Just the summing indices will be different, but of course that doesn't matter. So we're just led directly to this condition, which is the first part of the problem. Uh, so yeah, so lambda, our Lorentz transformations must satisfy this equation. This has to equal this uh, to preserve the line element. And so, okay, so now what we can do is if we write our Lorentz transformation as uh, a, so we're going to write it as an inf infinitesimally. So basically, uh, is infinitesimally far away from the identity transformation. So that will be so our identity in matrix forms is this delta, and then we'll have a infinitesimal. Well, it's a matrix of infinitesimal parameters that we're going to call W. And so we can, we can always, I guess, do this. There's nothing stopping us from writing it like this if, uh, if we're dealing with infinitesimal parameters. So if we do write it like this, then we still want this condition to be satisfied. So uh, we can just plug our infinitesimal expression for the Lorentz transformation in here. And we will get this equation. And I can FOIL this all out. And so the first term, I'll just have two delta functions, and they will just change these mu and nu to sigma and gamma. And then the cross terms, so one term will be uh, this times this times this. And so that will just make, so this, this, uh, this will lower the mu and become a nu, and then when I multiply by this, that nu will become a gamma. So this will become, uh, I don't know if this is a w or an omega, whatever it is. I'll just say w. w. It'll become w gamma sigma. And then the other term, if you do it, will be w sigma gamma. So I'll have this expression, and then obviously these things cancel. So I just need this plus this to be zero, or in other words, w gamma sigma equals minus w sigma gamma. So w is symmetric in these two indices. Uh, so now let's move on to, so it wants us to write w, well it wants us to write w, not w with two lower indices, but w with one raised ind indice and one lowered indice. And uh, basically uh, those, um, well, here, first I should say, so if we have our Lorentz transformation, and this is just our Lorentz transformation for a boost along the x direction. Uh, so I can write it like this. So phi here is the rapidity. So it's given by this equation over here. Uh, yeah, this is just from special relativity. So you should, I'm assuming you've seen this before. Uh, but if I, so if I write this infinitesimally, 
uh, so if phi is really small, then cosh of phi, uh, when phi is small, it's just one, and uh, sine sync, or not sync, but uh, shine, is uh, it's just phi. So I'll get this. Uh, but I can write this matrix as the sum of the identity plus this matrix. And so this will be the delta mu nu. This will be our, our oh, w mu, or not, well, mu gamma, whichever indice I'm using. Mu nu it should be. This should be mu nu. nu. Uh, and so anyway, what I was saying before is, so w with two lower indices is anti-symmetric. Uh, but our w with one index raised and one lowered is, uh, for the boost, it's symmetric. So if I act, if I lower this index here, I will find that w uh, mu nu with two lower indices, one of these phi's will become a minus, and so it will be anti-symmetric. So it will satisfy this condition. Uh, but basically, yeah, so the our usual transformations, the, the uh, for, matrix forms that we're used to dealing with are the forms uh, with one, are the Lorentz transformations with one index raised and one lowered. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. And so similarly, um, we can do the same thing for our rotation about the z-axis. So this is our usual rotation matrix. And if I, uh, I can again do the same thing. If theta is really small, then cosine of theta is one, sine of theta is theta. So I can again expand it out like this. And this will be our delta mu nu. This will be our w mu nu. And so it is anti. It is also anti-symmetric. So if I apply, if I lower the index here, I will get uh, w mu nu with both indices lower, uh, which will also be anti-symmetric. So uh, yeah, the the uh, anti-symmetry of these things depends on, or symmetry or anti-symmetry depends on the transformation you're looking at, and also whether uh, the indices are raised or lowered. So uh, so when they're lowered, all of the transformations, all of the Ws for the, all the transformations are anti-symmetric. But when you have one index raised and one lower, then they can be either uh, anti-symmetric in this case, but for the boost, it is symmetric.